Hello students, I am Dr. Indra Priyadashni, Associate Professor, Department of Oral Pathology, Vinayaga Mission Changracharya Dental College. So today I am going to talk about permanent maxillary canine. First we will see about the objectives. Learning objectives are generally of canines including the functions and classic triads and anatomy of maxillary canines. I will be teaching about the morphology of canine. So coming to the introduction, canines are a very long and stable tooth. There are four canines placed in the corner of the mouth. Here you could see the four corners of canines Okay, in upper and lower. So the dentition, corners of the dentition, they have a single pointed cusp. The canine is contained a single pointed cusp. It is also called as a cuspid. Maxillary canines erupts between 10 to 12 years of age and mandibular canine that erupts between 9 to 10 years of age. So the canines, there are four canines, the numbers or FDI numbers, it represent 1, 3, 2, 3 and 4, 3 and 3, 3. There are longest permanent teeth in our oral cavity. So the canines, the canines is called as a corner stones of the arch. It is arranged in the corner of the teeth. So it is give the aesthetic appearance to the face. It is also known as a cuspid. Functions of canine. Mainly the canine is present uh, in the corner of the tooth. It mainly give the appearance, aesthetic purpose and main function is the catching or tearing of the foods. When it is come to the animals, it helps in the catching and tearing of the foods and also defense mechanism and essential to the survey. Coming to the humans, the canine function is width of incisor. It's mainly support the lip and facial muscles. Okay. And also it helps in cut and piercing and sharing the food of food, con food particles. And also it helps in guide the occlusion. It gives the proper occlusion to the oral cavity and also good occurrence to the size and length of the roots. Classic triads of canine is the longest teeth in the mouth. You can see this in uh, animals it also it has the longest tooth. Then human also it has the longest tooth in the mouth. It has a long thick root that help to anger them in a alveolar process. So in alveolar process it will help to anger. So the classic triads of canine the incisal ridge is divided into two inclined slopes. So here it is divided into two lingual slopes that is a mesial and distal. So the mesial ridge is shorter than the distal ridge. This is the mesial ridge it is shorter than the distal ridge. They do not have a mammals. Mammalons is present only in the three rounded protuberance. It will see only in the permanent incisors. But here in canine it will not seen. Okay. The classic triads of canine, the labial surface is prominently convex and vertical labial ridge. There are only teeth have a labial ridge. Here you can see the prominent convergence in the vertical labial ridge. Coming to the classic triads of canine is greater labiolingual than the mesiodistally. Okay. The root is oblong fasciolingually in the cross section and distal contact area is more cervical than the mesial surface. Classic triads coming to the proximal area, the canines are wedge shaped proximally. Can you see the wedge shaped in the proximal area? Lingual height of the condor is in the cervical third. So the remaining outline is the convex on the lingual surface on the incisal third area. So this is the distal aspect and the proximal area of the canine. So the arch triads from the maxillary from the mandible. So the maxillary canine cusp tip. Here you can see the maxillary canine cusp tip is labial to long axis of the root. So this is the best way to distinguish between the maxillary from the mandibular canine tooth. So occasionally uh, always the canine roots are a single long single root but here occasionally more than one root may appear. 
Okay. Coming to the morphology of canine, we will see it in detail. So, the maxillary canine, when you come to the labial aspects, the crown of the maxillary canine is narrower, mesiodistally, and that of maxillary central incisors. Incisal aspect, the large cusp with pointed cusp tip. Here you can see the large cusp, protuberant cusp with pointed cusp tip. So, it has a two slopes. I already mentioned it has a two slopes. That is a mesial slope and distal slope. Mesial slope is shorter than the distal slope. Here, this is the mesial cusp ridge and this is the distal cusp ridge. Mesial cusp ridge is shorter and distal cusp ridge is longer. The labial surface is smooth and have a bulky in the middle because of the labial ridge. So, this is the labial aspect. So, here we could see, appreciate the labial ridge, bulk labial ridge and mesial cuspal ridge and distal cuspal ridge and cusp tip. Okay, here mesial is shorter and distal is longer. Lingual aspect, the crown and the root are narrow lingually. So, the cingulum is well developed and large, sometimes pointed like a cusp. Okay. Occasionally, it has a well developed lingual ridge that divides lingual fossae into the mesial and distal lingual fossae. Okay. So, heavy marginal ridge are associated with well formed cingulum and fossae. So, the lingual aspect you can appreciate the structure like cingulum here is a distal marginal ridge, distal lingual fossae and lingual ridge and mesial marginal ridge and mesial lingual fossae. Coming to the mesial aspect, from the mesial aspect, the canines are look similar and bulkier than the maxillary central incisors. The maxillary canine is the widest anterior tooth labiolingually. So, the cervical curvature is towards the cusp. Here you can see the cervical curvature that is towards the cusp. The contact area near the junction of the incisal and middle third. So, this is the mesial aspect. Here you could appreciate the labiolingual surface and uh, cervical line curvature in the middle portion. Distal aspect. The distal surface is a very similar to the mesial surface. The cervical line is exhibits less curvature. Okay. You could appreciate the cervical line that exhibits the less curvature in the distal aspect and the contact or is near the middle third. Coming to the incisal aspect of the canine, so the labiolingual dimension is greater than the mesiodistal dimension. The cusp tip is the labial to the center of the crown, is labiolingual and mesial to the center of mesiodistally. So the labial ridge and the cingulum are very noticeable from this aspect. Here you can notice the labial ridge and the cingulum you can clearly visible in the incisal aspect. Root is the only one. The root is the longest and strongest of all the teeth in the dentition. So, the mesial and distal surface of the root have a developmental depressions. So, it has a mesial and distal surface. You could appreciate the root have a developmental depressions. So, the average dimension in millimeters, crown length is 10 millimeters and root length is 17 millimeter. Mesio's distal diameter to the contact area is 7.5 millimeter and mesio distal diameter to the cervical line that is 5.5 millimeter and labiolingual diameter and crust of the curvature is 0.8 millimeter and labiolingual diameter at the cervical lines that is 0.7 millimeter. Curvature at the cervical line that is a mesial area that is 2.5 millimeter and curvature line in the distal area that is 1.5 millimeter. So, this is the average di diameters in uh, maxillary canines. Coming to the chronology of the maxillary canine, permanent maxillary canine, first evidence of calcification that will start in the month of 4 to 5 month old babies. Okay. So, the enamel completed at the age of 6 to 7 years. So, the eruption age of the maxillary canine or 9 to 10 years and root completion by 12 to 14 years. So, this is the surface of the maxillary canine, how it appears in the labial aspect and lingual aspect and distal aspect and mesial aspect 
and incisal aspect. So the maxillary canine, labial aspect, you can facial is made up of three lobes. Here you have a three lobes and singulum is the fourth. Maxillary canine, labial aspect, the mesial outline is broadly convex and flat in the cervical third. The mesial contact at the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. So coming to the labial aspect, in distal aspect that makes the shallows, that S convex in the middle third. Here you can see the curvature in the middle third. Slightly the concave in the cervical third. And distal contacts in the middle third. Distal contact is in the middle third. A distal cusp ridge usually is longer than the mesial cusp ridge. Maxillary canine coming to the labial aspect, the crown as long as the maxillary central incisors. It looks like a crown length, it is similar to the central incisor. The root is approximately 3.5 mm longer than the central incisors. I already told you the canine is the largest root in our dentition. The maxillary canine labial aspect, the root is little bent and distally in the apical third when it is come to the abnormal tooth, any anomalies, developmental anomalies, this will be similar like this. This is called dilaceration. Maxillary canine coming to the lingual aspect, the crown and the root are narrow and lingually than the labially. So the lingual ridge from the incisal to the cingulum present. So the lingual ridge is from the incisal to the cingulum. Here you can see the cingulum area. It has a shallow fossae on their sides. Here you can have a, uh, see the shallow fossae on the sides. So the maxillary canine lingual aspect, the cingulum and the tip of the cups are usually centered and mesiodistally. And lingual ridge is more prominent than the mesial and distal marginal ridge. The distal marginal ridge is more prominent than the mesial ridge. Here you can see the mesial marginal ridge is longer than the distal ridge. The root is narrow on the lingual side than the facial side. Coming to the proximal aspect, so the labial height of the contour in, uh, is in the cervical third. So the labial surface is more convex than the incisors. The cervical line tips incisally 2 mm on the mesial aspect. So the maxillary cranine, when you come to the proximal view, the facial and lingual outline of the root is convex, quite broader than the facio-lingual area. Maxillary canine, this is the proximal view. Here you can appreciate the mesial view and distal view. Mesial and distal root depressions are present. Here you can see the depressions in the mesial aspect and distal aspect. The more distal aspect is more distinct. So coming to the incisal aspect of the maxillary canine, striking feature of the canine incisal area, you could see the asymmetry of the crown. Here you can see the asymmetry of the crown. The line drawn from the cusp tip through the lingual while held the greater distal off with marked concavity on the labial aspect. So here the distal area concavity is more than the mesial aspect. Thank you. This is all about the maxillary canine morphology. First you have to read the chronological part and then uh, dimension of the tooth and then read labial aspect, lingual aspect, incisal aspect, mesial aspect and distal aspect with a diagram for more understanding. Thank you so much.